Hello there, Josh here from Racing to Profit. I thought I will try and do a quick run through and keep this video shorter uh, than the last one of the Royal Hunt Cup, which is obviously a 30 runner Ascot, Royal Ascot handicap. Um, easy to solve. Uh, let me get rid of my face so you can see the full screen in front of you. Uh, what do we know from day one so far as I recall this about half past four? Um, the ground's riding pretty quick. Uh, they'll no doubt put some water on this evening, but I think it's set fair tomorrow. Meant to be sunny again. Um, the reports back from the track are it's pretty quick. The going stick uh, is suggesting that the uh, near side, middle to near side, is fancied. Uh, it's certainly riding quicker on that evidence. Whether or not that means they put more water and try and even things up, I'm not quite sure, um, but it could mean that the stand side will be favoured again um, and that's something to keep in mind so high drawn horses possibly may be favoured. Um, what do we want to say about this race? Obviously on the blog uh, there's a few trends pointers of my own profile from the report uh, above here <clears throat> which you can dive into and flick through if you want. It's an okay profile. There's been stronger. There's been weaker. Uh, it's found 10 of the last 13 winners uh, so of course this um, longer list of 10 uh, may not cover the winner. Um, eight if you kind of uh, take heed of some of the stall pointers. Um, and yeah, there's various other different uh, bits and pieces we can look at also, but you yeah, obviously have a flick through those. Um, this race is obviously one for the hardy 30 runners. They can go a pace, but I'll show the pace map in a minute. Uh, you obviously tend to need a bit in hand, um, but that kind of big field experience and hardy experience of decent handicaps is never a bad thing in a race like this. Um, as I type, Gosden's are going okay. Uh, not too bad. Um, there's various different other uh, pointers, bits and pieces here. If I click on Brunch, uh, he's got some head-to-head -head stats. Uh, Michael Dodd's interesting, possibly because he doesn't tilt at windmills at Ascot. Only 23 runners the last five years. Five from 23, 13 places. That may be of some interest. Um, Grove Ferry comes from a hot form race, uh, which is possibly worth keeping an eye on. Whether or not it's a pointer for this race, we shall see. Um, but we can, yeah, you can see how that race is working out. He won that off 97. Uh, the next two in behind have since won. Two further down here have won also. Revich reposes here as well. Um, so whether or not this form is quite good enough for this race is obviously in the eye of the beholder. But uh, coming from a hot form race where you have beaten well handicapped horses who are clearly in half decent form who have then gone on and won since is always a positive as we know. Uh, so that's of possible interest. Um, there's various other bits and pieces down here. Ed Walkers uh, are not going along too badly either. Uh, that's, you know, trainers in form are always worth noting, uh, both for this race concerned and, you know, other um, horses and races. Yes, that kind of trainer form is obviously yeah, worth noting for, uh, well, today and other runners he may have uh, on the card and elsewhere, possibly. Charlie Applebee's are going okay. Um, well, more than okay, arguably. You can see the form there. Seven from 17, 12 places the last 14 days. Um, 76% of rivals beaten, so, um, you know, the Appleby team worth keeping on. Haggis, uh, various other bits and pieces. Uh, side bin saw, which I've touched on before. Um, what have we got down here? There's a few speed ratings. Obviously, there's the racing post ratings, and you can organise uh, those by highest to lowest and various other different bits and pieces also uh, there's the uh, gg speed ratings uh, down here um which uh, Revich has a big number there grove ferry brunch um so on and so forth uh, we shall see how well they play out um what i do want to show you before touching on a few others uh of to try and be interesting uh, of or of interest for you i should say um the instant expert now, the ground is possibly going to be rattling quick and anything with good to firm th through to form on firm may be worth marking up. Obviously, you can see, as always, in this kind of uh, profile, um, the green and the red. Uh, there's a few who um, haven't run on good to firm at all. Well, a couple there, or well, four, you can see there. There's those without winning form on good to firm in any sort of race, including maidens. Uh, so whether or not... 
uh, well, how you interpret that is obviously up to you. Those that have kind of proven themselves uh, on good to firm ground is clearly never a bad thing. If we go into um, uh, the place form, uh, you can see that, and obviously you can scan across uh, those that have course form also. Uh, Revich is interesting to a point. He's about 66 to 1, I think. Um, he does have course form. If you go back, the... He, he looks like he's better with cut. They've changed the headgear. They've put first time blinkers on. Haley Turner rides and she does ride Ascot and the straight course pretty well. Um, there's a slight doubt about whether he truly sees a stiff fast run eight furlongs out or whether actually seven furlongs at pace. He's better, but you can go back and watch a few of his runs this season have looked interesting. And while I think there may be stronger stayers in this, um, I wouldn't be shocked if he was kind of fifth or sixth. And uh, depending on how the place uh, pace pans out, uh, he might be mildly interesting at a big price. Um, Cliss of Capri, that may be similar comments about stamina can be applied to him there. You can see the handicap marks down the right-hand side. The minus number indicates the horse is above their last winning handicap mark. Of course, we're dealing with a fair few four- and five-year-olds who are still open to improvement. Um, but again, obviously, you can track, you can look at those with course form. Grove Ferry is interesting, um, and I touched on that hot form before. Uh, Brunch is interesting. Um, he's yet to finish out of the places uh, within Class 2 handicaps. I think he's versatile ground-wise. It is his first run um, here, uh, which is um, not necessarily a negative, but I suppose that's a bit of an unknown. Um, what else have we got? You can see Finest Sound. Uh, I think he's kind of near the head of the market. It's about 8-1 to one the field, is it? as I speak, um, and so on and so forth. So obviously you can pause and look at that. That's uh, for all form. And if we look at handicaps and flat handicaps on the turf at that um, and dig in and you can see the places, uh, you know, you may want to uh, focus on uh, something that's got some green and amber in terms of the going potentially. I think proven form on fast ground is obviously no bad thing, um, given what looks like the conditions will be. So you've got the likes of Astro King, Cliffs of Capri, uh, so on and so forth. May Danny's yet to finish out the places uh, when it's rattling fast and his win at Yarmouth was on proper firm ground. Um, so yeah, you can obviously look at those uh, different bits and pieces uh, and do what you please with that. That's the winning, uh, that's the placed form um, in flat handicaps and I can tick over that's the winning form um, within such flat handicaps on good on firm through to good to firm ground um, and yeah you can obviously do what you please uh, with that profile in front of you and maybe dive into the odd horse um, pace is obviously uh, interesting uh, and always important and this kind of pace map is uh, interesting indeed i think uh, and you'll see why um there's a fairly big sample size here um it's very much pace dependent as you can see so you can make all uh, here we've got good to firm ascot 16 plus runner eight furlong handicaps um and you can make all uh, isn't impossible and you can win from further back when obviously if they go hard and there's a pace collapse um that will benefit those horses that are held up if we look at this pace map here um you will see that uh you know these um traffic lights for the kind of draw and pace uh combo um obviously green is a positive so is amber red may be a negative if i go down low uh so you know drawn one on the across the far side of the track as we look based on what we know on day one so far on those going stick readings like i said um that's if they're replicated uh it could be beneficial to be high. So we've got all the way through to Lacanda here and down low, there's actually nothing uh, that habitually goes forwards and makes a lightning pace. So does that mean this group of horses here are going to be stranded and a bit behind uh, the near side, the stand side group, because who's going to go forward and who's going to take them into it. And when you combine that with the kind of track bias, the day one trap bias that we know and that can flip around uh, depending on the weather and if they kind of water to try and even things up of course um, but on what we know 
you know, it wouldn't be impossible to say down here may struggle. Um, having said that, of course, something uh, down low here may now bolt up. But that is a big question in my mind for some of these down here. Now, if you look at this middle gang, there's a big, big group who are usually ridden very patiently. Um, the Furtado Jason Hart ridden horse can go forward. That's if he's got, the, I suppose, the class and the ability to stay there. Um, is uh so yeah so there's some questions there are these going to be uh too far back or be left with too much to do um there's not screaming pace on paper uh now i've always i've thought sometimes before at uh, big field ascot handicaps and royal ascot there's not much not much pace on paper something may be able to get out and stay there and as it's turned out three four five six other horses have bombfold and they've been really strongly run races um so these things are never kind of a guarantee but of course this is based on the horse's last four running styles um so we can see that with this heat map and everything else um now may danny is not on my stats uh trends shortlist but that may not be a bad thing but you can kind of see why what's kind of 18 or 20s i have some mild interest in him from a pace perspective uh dan o'neill gets on with him well uh it's interesting that um jim crowley's not on uh the gosden horse here is owned by um the daughter of uh, the late uh, owner, um, Sheikh Mohammed. And so I think, yeah, I'm not quite sure how those jockey bookings work out and I'm not going to necessarily overthink it. There is a tie there uh, between Jim Crowley's retainer and this horse, I think is the point I'm making from memory. I think that's the case. Um, I could be talking nonsense, but I think that's right. Um, so whether or not he had the choice, I'm not sure. But Dane O'Neill, Crowley's never won on May, Danny, I do not believe. Uh, and it could be actually a positive that Dane's on. Um, now, he's going to have one thing in mind, which is going to be get out and try and make all. Uh, Johnson has won this race before, um, just from that pace perspective, because if he gets out, it's not impossible. He works his way over and gets that stand side rail and he can run up against that. And at what's kind of 18, 20 to 1, I thought from a pace perspective, that was interesting. Um, this lot here, there's a few prominent races as well. Is is the place to focus going to be on this part of the track? Because you've got a, a kind of habitual front runner here, a few pace pushers. Are these going to get ahead of this lot are these going to try and um edge over towards the stand side it'll be in the jockey's mind where they think uh, the track bias is after day one or potential track bias so some of these could all edge over but these hold up horses aren't going to get out and across if that makes sense um so they could be left with some traffic problems as well as ever if everything converges kind of towards this stand side some of these could be left marooned up the middle um potentially uh, or they're going to split into three groups which they have done in this race before or two groups so it's going to be fascinating how this plays out but on what we can see on paper here i think uh the positive is going to be for this group here uh, based on what i'm looking at there we shall see if that um how that transpires in the race um now i could spend minutes going through all of these and or not all of them some of them and not get anywhere near the winner um i wanted to mention a few well a couple of things there of potential interest in terms of uh for your own punting and puzzle solving if you want with that uh, excellent internet expert from gg's gold and the pace map um obviously there i have looked at uh the trend shortlist um like i said may danny is interesting and he's not on that list but johnston has won the race before um this horse is still unexposed potentially more to come only 10th run of his life he won at yarmouth on firm ground when he hacked up in a class four uh it could be his best on a proper fast surface he's got ascot form that was the um royal hunt uh, consolation race which they had at last year's meeting he won his side but they were and he was drawn low then he won his side but <clears throat> excuse me all of the action took place uh, high um, so Busker won that and he ran well in the uh, group one one of the group ones uh, in third on day one um, so yeah he was he won his side there and ran fairly well again on the pace uh dane like i said because he's won on him here um sylvester de souza made all of them at goodwood that extra stamina he does stay 10 furlongs like goodwood's is an easy 10 um that's no bad thing obviously he has to prove 
This Mark doesn't have him, but it is only the tenth run of his life. You watch that return at Newmarket. He was prominent. He was a bit gassy. He was a bit keen. Um, he did plug on, but he ran as if he might come on for it. And he, I think he probably over raced a little bit. Um, but that was still half decent run. Um, some of his form has worked out okay. Uh, and yeah, just because of that pace angle, he's got course form. Fast ground isn't a problem. He's drawn. He looks like he's drawn on the right side. Um, he stays a little bit further. Johnson's won the race before. The booking of Dane O'Neill because of this horse's profile and his record in, on him and Jim's record on him has yet to win on him um, may well be a positive. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but as a kind of, if I'm looking for a, a double figure each way horse, he was one. Um, I don't really like diving into single prices Uh in a race like this and you know it's not a, a clearly not a race where you can have a strong opinion if you do then best of luck um brunch i think he's just hardy i touched on those uh, dodge stats he does hit my trends profile you could look at these two seconds and does that suggest that the handicapper has him that would maybe influence me more towards kind of an each way bet, I suppose, in case he bumps into something better handicapped um than kind of being totally disparaging <clears throat> but he Looks versatile ground wise. He won on good to firm at York. He stays well. He's got big field form. Um, he arrives fit and in form. He ran, t he's run two crackers so far. Um, bumping into one at Doncaster, who obviously rear poses here a bit higher in the weights and without, um, an excellent claimer, seven pound claimer, is he, uh, on board. Uh, and, and this York race, those two were. Um, a fair way clear. Kenran won. They were on different sides of the track. I wonder if Brunch hit the hit the front too soon, got racing a bit too soon, but he stayed on, and it was a kind of photo. It was on the line, up and down. Um, so that was a decent effort. And when there's two horses horses clear of the rest, it may suggest there's a bit of uh, room in your mark. And if we look at RPRs, which I've touched on before, that was a career best, a 109. That's the best he's ever posted. So coming in to a career boast. Uh, best is never a bad thing obviously um it is his first run at ascot so that's clearly a question um but he has run well uh at the likes of york and doncaster um and the ground looks fine it's an unknown he's currently kind of 12 14 to 1 which uh i thought looked big as an each way option and like i said dodds doesn't tilt at windmills uh at this track too often um so i suppose having glanced at the market a bit uh, and looking at my trends, maybe those two. I did mention Revit as kind of, could he nick a place at a big price? Uh, slight stamina question, is he better with a bit of uh, soft in the ground? Uh, two others I do like, uh, a Grove Ferry, but uh, what I will mention is he's um, he does come here in form, of course. This track is very different from Chester. He has run well at Ascot before. It's just the ground. Yes, he won a novice on good to firm. That can be deceptive if it was four runners. Everything else has been on good or with cut in the ground. So proper good to fast is a question in my head, more of a question. If he had a good to firm record on um, in handicaps, I might be slightly more tempted. In the context, I think he's around eight to one or single figures. Uh, I, well, as I record this, having had a quick glance, um, I think I'd want a slightly bigger price, but that's obviously subjective. Uh, but he does arrive in form from a hot form race. Um, it looks like he travels well. He could still be well handicapped. Uh, another career best, 109 there. So he's of interest. Stout's also to a point because he has good to firm form. Uh, this race worked out well at Nottingham for all. It was only six runners. Um, I thought he needed more than the Hunt Cup. Maybe he will come on for it again. I wondered if he might bump into something with a bit more class. Now, if I'm comparing him to Brunch, Brunch has much hardier big field class two form. And I think I would uh, prefer that. And again, in the context, I think Astro King's being well found in the market. Sevens, eights or so. Um but I suppose having had a flick through and pondered a bit uh, in terms of two each way at a price, Brunch and Maid Danny, for the reason stated, is where I was hovering towards. Uh, I might ponder Grove Ferry um, and Astro King a bit more. Um, I'll mention Noel Meads, uh, who is interesting, um, unexposed, a big field form. But look, it's all been on soft and heavy. Uh, again, one a good to firm 
uh, maiden race. Uh, is it what he's always wanted? Has he actually been getting away with soft ground? I'm not quite sure. Uh, the fact that he's been kept a good or softer, heavy, heavy and soft the last twice. Um, obviously, he's got a big brown question, I think. Again, he's on the trend shortlist. Uh, so maybe he might go OK. But, you know, you get the idea. It's one of those races. I'm ticking around to 20 minutes. You've got the Internet Expert profile you can look at. There's that pace map you can study. Um, it's certainly not a race, I'm going to say. I've got a strong opinion on and please don't be put off by anything i've said but my kind of couple of quid each way to watch on the tenny telly with interest at the moment at the odds double figure prices um brunch and may danny is where my eyes are heading like i said i may not have mentioned the winner um but i think that's enough for this video uh do have a ponder do post uh, on youtube below or on the blog on the day two post if you've got any fancies in the royal hunt cup anything you like the look of um, and do post away hopefully the trends may do their job we shall see hopefully i've said something which may help point you towards the winner uh, but with that said this will do for a video for day two a flick through the royal hunt cup um if you do have a bet if you do fancy anything uh, best of luck as always um i hope you have a great day find a few winners and until the next time this is josh saying thanks for watching and bye for now